Alex, welcome to our first official day number one here with the uh, Club Adventures Tour here in Ho Chi Minh City. So today is all about Ho Chi Minh City. A lot of people still call it Saigon. Uh, it was actually changed, the name was changed in 1975 to Ho Chi Minh City to honor the very first president of Ho Chi Minh City. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, didn't get to see the end of the war. Oh, my phone's going crazy. Our day started, we started here at the Bird Cafe. And basically what they do is, these all these men you guys see behind me, uh, and, uh, and they go all the way around this side. They have birds and they're pet birds and what they do is they bring them here to interact with each other, to sing, to dance and um, kind of uh, create this entire atmosphere of early and welcoming morning. It's about 8.30 a.m. right now and it's absolutely wonderful to hear this sound. I don't want to get too close to scare the birds but all of these are birds, bird cages here. And then you're going around to this side and you see them here as well. All of these are bird cages. And I, if I shut up, you can hear them. Okay, so now we're on Lee Quang Gu, one of the uh, antique streets. One thing about Vietnam is the antique scene here is brilliant. It's not really just a Vietnam thing, it's an uh, Asia thing. I say, I've seen the same thing in China, I've seen it in Korea, I've seen it in, um, in uh, Malaysia quite a bit. And these, all these shops are not as many open now anymore because I was, he was explaining to me that Facebook and the internet has kind of taken over antiquing. It used to be where people will always come out uh, on the weekends and, and, and pick up these different ceramic pieces, brass pieces for their home. But now that they all have Facebook groups, there's really no reason to actually show up anymore. places in the world this is progress and every time these go up some other vendors get pushed out and they're saying that it's possibly going to start moving all the way down this street so you see it everywhere in the world gentrification is very real so welcome to the tin hao temple also uh known as the sea goddess temple so this temple was designed to uh, worship the sea goddess so when a lot of these uh immigrant communities came to vietnam they came by sea. So anytime they made it here uh, safely, uh, they escaped pirates, they escaped storms, they escaped famine, uh, they escaped all the things that would destroy a boat by sea. They worship and thank the sea goddess. And that's exactly what this temple is and it's still in operation today. It's beautiful. You see these all over Southeast Asia. Uh, the Chinese uh, migrant community is massive out here. The Chinese immigrant community is so huge in different parts of Southeast, excuse me, Southeast Asia, in Vietnam, in Malaysia, in Thailand, is that it's not only drastically changed how cities are laid out, because we're currently now in an entire district dedicated to Chinese uh, immigrant community culture's history, but also the cuisine, which is why you see so many, uh, so much Chinese influence on Southeast Asian cuisine. Let me just show you, so these are the, the prayer incense for the offerings and here you see it and you see the red pieces of paper that's usually the name of a, a family member uh, a ancestor uh, or something that you you're praying for so you see these beautiful ceramics here this is telling the history of the Chinese people here in Vietnam and you get them over here as well right into the Sun sorry guys look at that beautiful detail so this entire area is actually District 5, it's actually, it's called Cholung, Chinatown.
of the most popular uh, destinations here in Ho Chi Minh City is the uh, War Remnants Museum. Now, there it is. So, as you guys probably already know, the United States military had a massive, massive involvement. And as a former soldier, I've been here three times. This is my third time here. So, uh, this place is kind of, um, kind of cathartic, kind of special, kind of uh, frustrating, uh, and, and reflective for somebody like me. Um, it's interesting. Where's Donna? Donna is, Donna is a gold star wife. I found Donna. She's here. Donna's here. There she is. So Donna, you're a gold star wife, right? I am. So what is a gold star wife? We are the widows of the fallen soldier. And you came here for your husband, right? I did. He was here 66 to 69 in Play Poo. And I gave the fallen soldier my word. I would walk where he walked in the defense of my country. Amazing. A lot of you guys don't know, I was actually in the Air Force for 10 and a half years. I served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And this is a very special area for me because it's the Air Force area, the best force. Uh, so, uh, fun fact, the original name of this place until 1995 was the American War Crimes Museum. Um, the reason that this place is so uh, frustrating and difficult for a lot of people specifically Americans and a lot of vets is because it's it's presented from a Vietnamese perspective now I've always found this interesting why so many people get upset by this because our museums are presented from American perspective our narrative and story of what happened was from our perspective let me ask you this how many Vietnamese produced Vietnam War movies have you ever seen you can probably name five ten of them from our perspective video games TV shows but how many from the opposing perspective. So I'm gonna show as much as I can in this video. So, and it's a very graphic museum. So this is your warning, this is your disclaimer. If you aren't up for any graphic images, you probably wanna fast forward. I'll put a time code here or something. Hey guys, so I just finished up uh, here at the War Remnants Museum and something kind of kicked in, to sparked uh, how really truly disturbing this uh, exhibition could be for some people so what I've decided to do is I'm gonna take this section out of this uh, vlog and put it in its own separate video so if you want to see it then just click on the, I'll put a little link above uh, and then a link also in the bio if you want to see it go ahead uh, I'm just saying let you know it's graphic um, if not you know we'll get on with the rest of the vlog so there we go more something that I don't necessarily like talking about publicly um, I was in the military for 10 and a half years. I served in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I have a very different perspective on war and conflict than most people. <clears throat> and the Vietnam War is not only a complicated subject for a lot of um, service members, but also just uh, an American uh, complicated conversation for Americans. So I kind of steer away from that conversation uh, unless I'm talking to a Vietnam vet or a fellow serviceman. But publicly, like in this form, I just won't talk about it. But what I will talk about is my views on war and conflict in general. Um, I, after so much time in the military, after traveling the world for so long, um, I've, I've come to the conclusion that war is the greatest failure, in, uh, the greatest failure of humanity. Um, I, I don't think there's anything worse than conflict and war. The moment you start dropping bombs on people, that's it. Um, nobody wins. E even though there's usually a winner, nobody wins when people are killing each other and we've only found more creative ways to do it um, one of my biggest gripes and issues with being an american is now since um you know vietnam war the 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 results of war the consequences of war the real consequence the human cost it's being censored even though a lot of outlets pretend that they're you know um they're so progressive and, and they're full of they're all about freedom they don't show the real consequences of war i was in iraq and afghanistan i see i saw it and i've seen the stuff that they don't print uh they'll never put to publish um and it's frustrating because when i go home everybody glorifies war we've turned fucking war into video games now where we've become so desensitized to it that people are okay with advocating and supporting conflict and war when it should be the very 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 last resort so um that's my view on it uh, i'm not a pacifist I, I i think people sometimes war is necessary it's it's, it's the end all be all it's it's the the the, um, the the only way to move forward sometimes but not often 
Um, so don't paint me as a pacifist. I'll never say I am that. But every single option should be exhausted before we get to that point. So uh, that's my point of view on war and conflict. Um, I didn't want this to be a downer vlog, but you know, reality is reality sometimes. And uh, the conflict in the Vietnam War and the conflicts we have going now around the world is uh, very, very real for a lot of people. So, so lunchtime right across from the famous Ventron Market. It's all inside. Hopefully we're going there. I'm not sure if we're going to do it. And then over here, full 2000, where Bill Clinton ate. Set over here. That's the red table. That's where Bill Clinton sat. Nobody sat there. Let's get in. Totally by accident. We all got different bunch. Of, I mean, um, a pho. So I have the beef. She got the chicken. And he got the seafood. Similar thing to last night we had. Chili. Lemon. Uh, bean sprouts. Who? Mm. Mm. I guess Eric likes the soup. I do, I love it. You don't like it? It's grilled pork and rice. Check it out. So good. I really like this. Say this, right? And I'm gonna need you to tell me if I'm saying this right, all right? So I'm gonna call it Kong Shun Hun Chien Sa. That's how you say it, right? Kong Shun Hun Chien Sa. Is that right? Quite good. How do you say it? Kong Shun El Kien Sa. El Kien Sa. My man. Like El Kien Sa. We're about to do a little bit of shopping at the Bente Market. The Bente, like, like that. There we go. Said I'm not the biggest fan of this place, only because it's uh, so tourist centric. It's difficult to bargain here, but you have the same issue in uh, Thailand. It is places like Chato Track and BK is becoming far more difficult to bargain because they just have waves of tours, so they don't really need you anymore. However, you still get some really good deals, even if they're not willing to budge on the price. The numbers are good. My biggest thing when it comes to haggling, I'm not about to stand there arguing with you for 30 minutes for 50 cents. It's gotta be like a substantial discount. So if they say something, I don't know, like a million, I'm gonna say 500,000. Now, if it comes down to 500,000, then we have a conversation, but otherwise I'll just pay it and walk away. So right across from the market, uh, every alley, and you see this, keep looking at myself. But, so most markets, Right off the main market square, you'll usually find these streets that usually that specialize. One street would be a bags, one street would be shoes, one street would be electronics, and, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to not die, but Ho Chi Minh is exactly the same. So she actually wants to buy, Donna wants to get some North Face jackets, because, you know, Donna's from Boston. So we're about to see what we can find in this area. Outlet stores here. Cool bags, which is a really good price. I always found crazy about places like this. People always like, oh, it's a knockoff, it's a fake. I was like, you guys do know these are made here, right? <laughs> yeah. The green, man. Go with the green? I go with the green. Red, red is too bright, man. It's too right. flashy. So and then Donna grabbed this think? one for so about people, one mil. People, Not people bad. What was that? 43 money. US dollars. Yeah, people, that's true. As a guide, that's a good idea. Get the red one as a guide so people will never lose you. <laughs> I've said this before, but I personally enjoy buying apparel in places like Vietnam because you get excellent quality for great prices. For example, like that one North Face, uh, she got it for about 50 US dollars, went in the States. It will be way more. So all three of those jackets, um, one uh, 3XL, one 2XL, and then a smaller one came up to about 155 US dollars. So uh, $3,600,000. So I just checked the pricing on uh, each bag. She so basically paid about a third of what she would have had to pay back home uh, for factory outlet. Kind of, oh, excuse me. No, yeah, it's like it's a over Actually, I think it is less because they go about. I yeah. bought one 480. 480? Yeah. Jesus. She paid a lot less. I was looking at Amazon online for the used ones for like 150, but brand new, she paid a lot less. A quick stop here at the eyeglass place. So Donna, there she is, left her glasses in Hong Kong on the, on the seat, so she had to get a new pair. 
So here in Vietnam, it's not about you don't have to make an appointment with the ophthalmologist. You literally just come in and get it done. So you got two new pair of glasses with the exam, plus there are these super transition lenses. You know, when you go outside, it gets dark, you go in, it gets light. It costs a grand total of like 260 US dollars um, delivered in one day. So. Oh, and uh, the reason they were so expensive is because they're Ray Bans and um, Calvin Klein. So like, they're designer, real designer brands. Um, let me know if you guys think I should do a whole video on. Um, on tourism, like should I do, like medical tourism in Asia, um, I actually get a lot of stuff done, a lot of different procedures. So I'm kind of up to date on South Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, the, the medical industries there. So if you guys want to see a video, uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you want me to cover. Check this out. It is the cathedral has been reconstructed. Unfortunately, it's absolutely beautiful, wonderful go in. But here's the post office from 1886. This is actually the, the first place to have telephones in Indochina. It was right here, built by the French. Well, it's a uh, very popular tourist destination and tourist site. As you can see all around, different souvenirs, tour stuff. It's actually also still a place where you can get your mail done, right over here. You can do uh, souvenir postings. Over here, you can still use the telephone fax, domestic posts, you can pay your bills over here. Regular posts on this side, and then they do parcels and packages on this side. And a proper post office still. So I'm making a move on these sides. The whole side has turned into souvenir shops. So this side here and the other side is identical. They come up here. Hey guys, wrapping it up. This is the last stop of the day. Very emotional day. Uh, and this is it. This is it for Ho Chi Minh City. So tomorrow morning we head up uh, to the uh, Mekong Delta. We're staying in a homestay for two nights. And uh, we're finished with the city. We'll come back here just to fly out to Cambodia uh, for one night. But that's it. Um, Ho Chi Minh City is kind of a complicated city uh, for me. Um, I love big cities, but it's just something different about this city and I think everybody should definitely come and check it out so uh, as usual lead the world better than you found it come back tomorrow for the next video and I will see you guys later